My favorite 4th of July memory is in Seattle about 15 years ago visiting our family. <clears throat> they lived on a horseshoe street with a small park at the end of each street. There was a parade. Our son John, an American history major in college, was the leader of the parade. He was Uncle Sam in full regalia of a suit of red, white, and blue, full white beard, and a tall striped hat. Having been drum major in his high school band, he, with his baton, strutted as the collection of neighbors, children, and dogs followed him down one street and up the other. The children and their parents were dressed in red, white, and blue, pushing strollers, buggies, pulling wagons, and walking, skipping. There was a dad in a slow-moving convertible playing patriotic songs as the parade moved along. Our daughter-in-law pulled our two grandsons in a bright red wagon festooned with streamers and flags. My husband and I looked at each other and said, does it get any better than this, ever? We were overcome with joyful emotion. The parade ended in the little park for an afternoon of leg races, hot dogs, hamburgers, homemade ice cream. Later that night, we gathered again for sparklers and fireworks. This memory lives vividly in our hearts today. What being an American means to me, to have freedom, freedom of speech, press, religion, the right to assembly. All of these freedoms are so apparent right now in our country, and I'm so grateful to be a citizen of the United States of America. We have no idea how blessed we are. We get a hint when we travel abroad and return home this present time in our history, we are witnessing these freedoms firsthand. This afternoon in La Jolla, we will have a front row seat to observe the freedom of assembly and the freedom of speech as the Black Lives Matter peaceful protests marches right past Casa de Manana. Being American also carries with it a responsibility to always put our best foot forward not only here in this country, but also in the world by being fair-minded, honest, and pure of heart. These are our strengths. Well, what I am grateful for this 4th of July, I am grateful for many things, the above mentioned freedoms, good health, and the opportunity to have lived at Casa de Manana for eight plus years. We have, John and I have loved living here and are so grateful for the friends we've made with the residents, the staff, and the employees. It has been an incredible experience. We are currently very grateful to the staff and employees who have cared for us during this three month lockdown. The meals, all the special programs, Zoom, have kept us delightfully, delightfully well-fed, nourished, entertained, and cared for in every way. My favorite 4th of July memory is when my kids were little and I dressed them in matching outfits and put them in a red wagon and took them to the Del Mar Fair and we walked around and saw all the animals and it just felt very patriotic and people commented on their cute little outfits. Being American means um, having the ability to navigate any dream that you wish to have and for me, I, I've had opportunity actually once to move to another country with a man <laughs> and I said no I will never leave America because I am proud of where I grew up I'm proud of my country and I think other countries look on us that they're proud of us too
first of all, I'm grateful for all you fine folks on this 4th of July. Um, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have a job because I look forward to every day coming to work and taking care of you guys. Um, the second thing that I'm grateful for is that I have a daughter serving in the United States Air Force. She is stationed over England and from afar she's keeping our country safe and she's healthy. I also have a son who's healthy and a husband that's healthy. So I'm very um, grateful for a lot this 4th of July. When my daughter was four years old and we went to the Mark Fair to celebrate 4th of July. To me, being American means um, accepting and embracing different cultures. I am grateful my daughters have the ability to reach a higher education. The 4th of July celebration that I remember and will never forget happened many, many years ago. But let me tell you about it. Um, it was really in the 1930s. Now, I was probably 11, 12 years old. We lived in Spokane, Washington. We drove to Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, to Coeur d'Alene Lake for the annual celebration of 4th of July. You have to understand, that was 30 miles, no freeway. We had a Model T Ford, and our speed limit was 25 miles an hour. Now, we had spent all day long in the park at Coeur d'Alene doing everything that one always does for Fourth of July, eating hot dogs, food, games, swimming, whatever. We were ready for the fireworks. It was dark, uh, there were hundreds of people in the park. My family, my mother and dad, and four of us kids were sort of at the back part of the crowd. We thought we could see better and then escape at the end. Everything went beautifully at first. The, the fireworks were on a barge several hundred yards from shore. On the barge were two men with torches, and they would go from one uh, firecracker or one uh, um, Roman candle to another <clears throat> long before days of the computer. They did the first one. Uh, the skyrocket was beautiful. We owed and awed. Then the next one came, and the next one, and it was just gorgeous. We were settled in, we loved it, and then everything, everything exploded. Uh, we don't, didn't know what happened until later, but somewhere a spark had gotten onto one of the, uh, one of the fireworks, and one thing went off and it spread to another, there was no control. Everything went off at once. The uh, sky rockets were going straight up in the air, horizontal to the grand ground. Roman candles were going in every direction. You've never seen such a gorgeous display of color and light and fireworks. It was frightening to kids. It was wonderful. My parents were horrified and of course we all ran for our lives but never will I forget the excitement of everything going off at once and that was the most exciting 4th of July I ever had. Well I thought about that and I think being an American today means different to me from what it might have a few years ago. Now, you know, it's pure luck that one is born on American soil. We had nothing to do with it. 
So here we are with all of these privileges, with rights, uh, with, uh, with uh, kinds of things that we can do with protections that are not available in other countries of the world, but somewhere we have an obligation. I do feel, as an American, I'm responsible in some ways for protecting what we have. Now, what can one person do? You know, last week in the New York Times was a page that I think in that article um, said it better than anything I can say. And essentially it was saying, <clears throat> as an American, as a citizen, uh, we are masters of our Congresses and of our courts. Um, and we do not overthrow the Constitution. But our job, our, our responsibility, is to overthrow those people, in this case, men, who do pervert our institutions. I think it's very easy for us to take so much for granted. I think we always have a job to accept a responsibility for protecting what we have. It seems to me, for me, uh, freedom of speech, freedom of press, are all of our freedoms are very important, but freedom of speech and press are outstanding for me. I am forever grateful to be able to say what I want to say, when I want to say it, to have a neighbor who totally disagrees with me and also <clears throat> can express his or you, his or her viewpoint <clears throat> without being punished. We live in an era <clears throat> where freedom of speech is not something that is easy to come by. It is so important, certainly to me and to our country. I think my uh, favorite 4th of July memory, uh, we spent a lot of time at uh, Kate Sessions Park here in Pacific Beach, and I always remember going there uh, just about every year with my family, watching the fireworks uh, from the hilltop there, and uh, being able to see them from five or six different locations in the, uh, in the city, uh, and that was always nice. Uh, it was almost like we got four or five uh, uh, 4th of July uh, festival fireworks at, at, all at the same time, so that's what I remember. does uh, being American mean to me? I think the main thing for myself is that this country allows you to prosper based on uh, education and it allows you to prosper uninhibited based on your own personal mindset and your own personal drive and goals and uh, unlike a lot of other countries here um, you can do and be anything that you really want to be, as long as you put your mind to it. So I think that's probably the number one reason I would, to say I'm proud to be an American. So what am I grateful for this 4th of July? Uh, I think I'd probably say the same thing I'm grateful for every single day. Uh, the love of my family. Uh, the fact that uh, we're all doing very well and uh, that I have my health and my wife has her health and my children are doing fine and, and uh, I don't think I'd pick a particular day to say that, I think every day. Uh, I'm grateful for my family. My favorite 4th of July memory is always going on the roof at my parents' house to see all the 4th of July fireworks. to me 
it's very important because my parents were not le legal here when, before I was born, so I know they went through a big struggle for my sister and I to be born here and have a better future, a better life. So it means a lot to me to know what my parents had to go through in order for me to have that American freedom. So this 4th of July, I feel like the country has gone through a lot. So I'm grateful for people coming together and learning from everything that's going on and being more united. Um, hopefully we can keep it up and be there for each other more in the near future. Well, it's a very important one. It was uh, July 4, 1946, and I got married. I was 18 and a half, and that was the beginning of a very, very long marriage. It means freedom in so many ways that uh, we tend to take for granted now, but uh, I'm a world traveler. And I have learned that uh, these things that we take for granted are rare sometimes in other parts of the world. So I'm very grateful for my freedoms. Right now, I am very grateful for the freedom of the press. I can see that uh, having them having the freedom to pursue things that are wrong is so important to us. So that first comes to mind. On July 4th, 1976, which was the 200th anniversary of the signing of the Declaration, there was a big ceremony. We were, we, we were living in Wayne, Pennsylvania, which is a western suburb of Philadelphia. And there was a big ceremony going on out in Valley Forge that day. And we were out in our, our yard, and a big helicopter flew over. We realized it was a president's helicopter. Heading had come up to Philadelphia, landed in Philadelphia, and then was heading out to Valley Forge for part of the July 4th ceremony. That, that was really slick to see that. In uh, 1995, I was stationed at Bowling Air Force Base with my family, and um, 4th of July, we were right on the bank of the Potomac River, and uh, was about start the party started about 4 o'clock, and it was sponsored by the base commander, and we had the uh, Air Force Band was stationed at Bowling, so they put on a, a concert for us. And then um, we had a picnic, and then we waited until it got dark, and uh, we enjoyed the fireworks of, uh, from uh, Washington, D.C., and it was just really spectacular and very, very special, uh, especially with the band there and all of our military friends, so that was one of our favorites. freedom to be able to do what we want, to think what we want, to say what we want. But someone else may not agree with it, I may not agree with somebody, but yet I can't criticize them for that. They may disagree, but it's they have the right to say what they like. Being an American means being free and also having so many diverse people as a um, citizens of the United States because each one of them brings a very special um, skill set to make our community and our country more successful. I'm grateful for the freedom to change, to vote the way we want, to change things according to our votes. We can change administrations, 
if we want to. If we don't want to, we can keep them. It's a majority of the country that, that wants that, and that's the way it should be. The freedom that I cherish most is the freedom to vote so that we can have a government by the people, for the people. And um, that is very important that we preserve that, especially in this time. Favorite 4th of July memory. Um, I grew up here in San Diego, up in the Claremont area, not too far from here at Casa. And um, when I was a kid on 4th of July, uh, they had a parade all the way down Claremont Drive. And I didn't live too far from Claremont Drive. So we as a family would go up and watch that parade in the middle of the day. We'd go back home, swim in the pool forever, and then the piece de resistance is when we would walk up to the South Claremont Re Recreation Center and we would stake out a spot on the grass and lay on our backs and stare up at the sky and watch the fireworks go off and ooh and ah forever. And then when it was time to go home, we knew it was a long walk, so we would fake that we were falling asleep. So dad had to carry us home, the lucky guy he was. Being American is something that I think a lot of us take for granted, but uh, getting back to my last point, you know, I was born and raised here in San Diego, and I never ever am ceasing to be amazed myself at the fact that I'm lucky enough to be born and raised in the greatest city, in the greatest state, in the greatest country. I mean, how awesome is that? It's something we take for granted. And I know that there are millions and millions of people around the world and they're, what they want to do most is come to America. And here we are already here. I mean, how lucky can we get? So what freedoms am I grateful for? I think if you look around the world right now and you see what's going on in America, we have a lot of crazy strife going on right now uh, with lots of conversations going on between races and things like that. And the beauty of it is, is that it doesn't matter how you feel about any of it. You don't have to agree, you don't have to disagree, but the beautiful thing is, is that our country is a big old forum for free speech. And you can go out and talk about anything that's on your mind. I mean, how many places like that do you have that, 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 that ability? If you look right now at Hong Kong, for example, they're being shut down right and left over there from free speech. And yet here in our country, you can talk just about anything. And I mean, if you think about it, if you look at our constitution, which is way over 200 years old, we've barely made any changes to it at all during that time. So it's a pretty perfect document. We're pretty lucky to have it. I guess my, uh, my happiest memory of 4th of July would be the very first that I can recall. It would have been 1945, 1946. So that would have made me either four or five years of age. And it was a big uh, picnic affair and uh, lots of wonderful food, I can recall. Running around, playing with other kids in the field and it was out in the countryside. And then uh, the, we got together for the fireworks. And when that first big uh, cherry bomb or whatever went off, that big boom, the dog that uh, another couple had just went bananas in fear and just took off into the woods. So the rest of my memory was uh, fear for the dog and the chaos involved of trying to find it. And my mother saying, you kids stay here, you don't get involved. And then she would go out and, and look anyway. And it, it did bring up a second memory that as a young father and would have been 1969 and I had a a four and a half year old son and we were uh, down on Guam taking, having a, a brief little vacation and it happened to be the 4th of July weekend. So uh, we went down and I can remember sitting on a jetty and I had my arm around both my daughter a couple years older than my, my son and remembering that kind of fearful thing because I realized this will be there first. And so I was busy telling them that, well, the fireworks has got a lot of bangs and so forth, and lots of beautiful things going off in the air, but you don't have to worry because uh, no harm is gonna come. But when my son heard that first big bang, man, he was just clutching, 
clutching at me. So his first memory was probably quite similar to mine. Well, being American means to me, uh, if you put it on a simple basis, is, is uh, our Declaration of Independence. And conflated with that is, of course, our Constitutional Convention of 11 years later in 1787, where a republic form of government was established. The Fourth of July itself was just a, a listing of, of indictments of the king and why we were wanting our independence from it. So I think a lot of Americans conflate the two in our own minds. So it's really those freedoms that we got from our Constitution. The, the first five were, you know, freedom of religion, of speech, uh, of assembly, of the press, uh, and a right to uh, peacefully um, protest against, the, against our government. And then later on, of course, the Bill of Rights came and we had 10 first 10 amendments are considered the, the, uh, the Bill of Rights. So those Bill of Rights are, are really unique to our, to our country. We obviously have some real problems. Uh, our second amendment, which is the right to bear arms, is, is probably the most controversial one we have. But I spent a career overseas as a Foreign Service Officer, and I'm always reminded of, uh, so I saw many, many different countries and I ended up feeling that we had the best kind of form of government, at least for we Americans. And I also remembered that uh, Winston Churchill said that uh, democracy is the worst form of government there is, except for all the others. And there's a lot of truth to that. And one of the things that I remember too now is that uh, at the end of that Constitutional Convention, in Philadelphia in 1787. There was a crowd outside wondering, you know, these de deliberations of, of the Congress as to what form of government we would have were super secret. And so they'd been uh, six weeks of haggling and so forth. So finally it was over and they were coming out. And Benjamin Franklin was asked that, that key question by an observer. What form of government do we have? And he said, we have a republic, madam, if we can keep it. Okay, in terms of what, uh, what freedoms am I most grateful for as an American citizen? I think they're really the, the first uh, five of our uh, constitution, which were uh, freedom of, of uh, speech, our freedom of uh, religion, our freedom of uh, the press, our freedom of assembly, and the freedom of the right to petition our government. I think those are, are very, very key aspects that have made us a great country. But I'm also fearful that all of those are under threat. And I'll just be upfront, uh, it's happened with remarkable speed it's happened with our current president. And in that, we now are, are, have questions about freedom of uh, religion. Let's take religion, first of all. Uh, there are, are many groups that um, I have always thought the separation of religion and government is one of the real strengths of this country. And yet we have a lot of religious evangelical kind of groups now, and Catholics, that on the issue of uh, abortion uh, are really uh, wanting to change our constitution, they're wanting to change others. So I'm concerned about that. Even our freedom of speech is under attack uh, with uh, the press and the, um, all of the Twitter accounts and the things that can be said now with impunity and no repercussions for it. Uh, our freedom of um, well, just a peaceful assembly and a right to pr protest against the government. All we need to do is look at our TV nightly and see these demonstrations of Black Lives Matter all across the country. And uh, these are, are, are people that really want a 
and I think rightfully so. Uh, so to see changes brought, I would not have, like to have to give the talk to, to my kids that a black parent uh, obviously has today. So I would say I, 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 we have the greatest country, there's no doubt in my mind. We have the, the greatest constitution. But as American citizens, we have to be really concerned when it's under threat, and I think it's, it's under threat. So my uh, memorable uh, things for July 4th is uh, when I worked in CASA. So um, uh, on that day, I think uh, I remember firework. Um, but, uh, like barbecue, hamburger, and hot dog, um, and American flag, and I, th I think Casa had it all. So I think, to be honest, I wouldn't have uh, have a July Four uh, properly if I hadn't worked on that day at Casa. Um, so I remember after working, uh, I went to the beach and uh, wait to see fireworks, and that's just perfect. And I've been working on every every uh, 4th of July at CASA and I love doing that. <laughs> so being American means to me is, uh, I, uh, it's, this means freedom. Um, so I, I, I love travel. So I think being American, I can go to like 184 countries without visa. Is truly freedom, and uh, you know the freedom of expression. I think is uh, one of the most important thing that I can have when I'm here. If I stay in my country, uh, which is Vietnam, uh, you know, or China, um, you know, everything I say, I I, I cannot do it. Uh, uh, I, I'm gonna be in trouble with the government. So I think it's great to be American. Yeah. grateful for, for this uh, 4th of July. Again, I think I'm grateful for working here at CASA because I'm going to work on that day for sure. Um, I think uh, that just make my day. Um, I think to be a part of CASA is, uh, you know, like um, I always say, I, I said this before to a lot of presidents, I'm going to mention it now again, that uh, going to work at CASA is like uh, come to play with my friends. Because uh, around me, around me, there's a lot of nice people. Like um, you know, I see the nice residents here, and everyone treats everyone else so nicely. Um, so I think it's it's gonna be uh, that's what I'm grateful for. <laughs> Working. <laughs> so my dad was in the Navy, and one Fourth of July, they had a family day on a ship where they took us on a tour and then they took us out to sea and they brought us back and then they provided a barbecue and a picnic on the Coronado Beach and then at night we got to watch the fireworks all as a family. That was a really nice time. Endless opportunities, land of the free, free freedom of choice and respecting everyone for who they are. My good health, my independence, spending more quality time with my family, celebrating our national independence day of our beautiful country, thanks to all the military for their dedication, for their services. My favorite 4th of July memories consist of the days when I was a teenager and we used to have our own fireworks. We didn't have to have all those fancy ones, which I think are really, really great these days. But I like to be involved in doing things. So what we used to do is we'd buy these fire, fireworks and we had all kinds of them, the firecrackers, the cherry bombs, the uh, little, pea, little pea things that you got and you threw against the a brick wall and they exploded and, and we had uh, pinwheels we had uh, what we did was uh, to 
use a firecracker and we had an empty tin can and we would uh, put the tin can down with the open part on the on the gr on the ground and then put a firecracker underneath it and light it and then see how high we could get it to go <laughs> so we liked that we had sparklers we had all kinds of great things so my I love doing all, all that we had little tiny lady finger firecrackers little tiny ones and you could throw them underneath the women's dresses I guess and then you could <laughs> scare them off that's probably why all the women are wearing suit pants these days so you don't have that problem at all <laughs> anyway uh, I like doing all that the rockets the uh, the uh, Roman candles, those things that they had, like a tube, and you light it off, and these beautiful, colorful blobs came out up in the air. So, uh, those are my good memories for me <laughs> uh, about the uh, about the Fourth of July. Okay. What USA means to me, on the, as far as the Fourth of July is concerned. Uh, my daughter lived in Clifton, Ohio, just a suburb of Dayton, Ohio. And this was a little unincorporated place that uh, enjoyed the, the traditional sense of the old time uh, 4th of July with big flags and the fire truck and the uh, big maintenance <laughs> trucks that they had too plus some high school bands and people and Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts and you'd get a spot along the street uh, on somebody's lawn there because they were all farmhouses along there so we'd stay sit there and have our fire our uh, 4th of July picnic and sit there and enjoy the parade uh, that was really something that when you hear the flag, see the flag, and see the uh, hear the music, uh, can bring a tear to your eye. As far as I'm concerned, <laughs> so that's my uh, thought on USA because it's so typical and wonderful. And freedom. What does it mean to me? Well, to a certain extent, I think in our 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 era, that freedom equates to me to be opportunity. I think that uh, we have opportunity here and it's freedom to go as far as you can and as far as you able to is to you know uh, to be what you want to be I think that that's still available these days and I think that if you use it your what your God-given things are then you can do well uh, Get something, get a job, go do, do something, no matter what it is. So that to me is freedom to go around and the opportunity to do what you want to do. One last thing on freedom. President Dwight Eisenhower had a profound saying that freedom is the opportunity to practice self-discipline. Think about that. Maybe I shouldn't have thrown those little firecrackers under the young ladies' dresses. <laughs> anyway, that's it. Thank you. America is essentially a dream. It is a dream of a land where men of all races, of all nationalities, and of all creeds, can live together as brothers. The substance of the dream is expressed in these profound words. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness.